Hello, my name is Kerry Arthur, and today we are going to have a little chat about that there leaked GW NDA. Now, I know a lot of you are probably sick of hearing about this, but it's genuinely something that I think needs to be talked about and kind of spread about a little bit more. This was initially going to be the Monday Ramble, by the way, but with this, I feel like it's really kind of important to not get stuff wrong when it comes to the actual NDA itself. And I made the mistake in like the initial few kind of drafts of this video basically going into more of like a legal side of things than really I have any right to do because I'm not a lawyer. I did not go to lawyer lawyer school, law school. Apparently I don't even know where you go to become one. So in terms of like trying to analyze what it means in comparison to I don't know, like employee contracts and stuff, that's not my that's not my thing. That's not what I should be doing. And quite often I find myself speculating more than I should about what Games Workshop actually intends via this particular leaked NDA. There's also a huge amount of drama surrounding this NDA, which we're just not going to go into. There's no point covering it. It's all, it's just a big, horrible mess. And that's not what this channel is for. And so the only thing that I'll say in relation to like the really kind of just bad side of this whole thing um it does the nda does seem to have been confirmed to be real but its confirmation was done via doxing and someone was doxed by someone else which is not the way to confirm anything and if someone shares something with you in confidence you do not then go and give away who they are what they've signed just don't do that. That should not even be something that needs to be said from one functional person to another. I Just don't do it. It's a really terrible thing to do. Unfortunately, that is where that kind of confirmation came from. That's literally all you get in for that side of things. So, the actual NDA itself was originally given to Miscast, a really good YouTube channel. I'll link in the description. And it was then placed on the Sig Marxism subreddit by Miscast. Uh, Brent from Goobertown Hobbies kind of spread it far and wide. And there's been a lot of discussion about it. And there's a few things that I think need to be addressed when it comes to this. This particular NDA. Because there's some... This is one of those situations where I think people need to remember that two things can be true at once. Before we go into kind of the general gist of it and what it means. And what it means compared to other NDAs in similar spaces, um, there's a couple of videos that you should really you should really watch, and I'd hope that if you know what this thing is, you'll have already watched these. So one is by Hogue Law, where they go and talk about the uh, talk about the NDA and break it down as to what each clause means and the significant parts of it. And the other one is by Discourse Miniatures. I will say, Discourse Miniatures video is really really good clear, concise explanation of what things mean, and also very clearly marked were things like opinion or interpretation. So Discourse did a great job of kind of analysing what each bit was, but when it came to what, what Discourse thought personally, that was very clearly marked. That's something I really, really like when it comes to this sort of thing. So yeah, definitely really good video. Plus all the legal stuff was was delivered via the medium of clown makeup. So, you know, fun and educational. You can't go wrong. Now, on to the earlier statement of how two things can be true at the same time. Now, I found the conversation surrounding this leaked NDA incredibly frustrating to the extent where I was having conversations with people in private that basically got me so irritated and frustrated and just in a state of why is no one listening that I ended up just sacking it off and walking away which was not the correct move because that gives the impression that it is not significant and it's not worth talking about which is absolutely incorrect so my handle of it in that respect was not great I did that thing where you have like really crappy personal conversations but then vent about it in a public space which is never the way to go it's extremely immature and yeah dumb move on my part, but I found it frustrating because something that came up a lot with the discussion of this leaked NDA was the phrase boilerplate. So a huge number of people said, well, this is just a boilerplate NDA. I've signed these. People that work alongside me have signed these. My company uses these all the time. The company I work for uses these all the time. In my industry, this is standard. What's the problem? Oh, it's just, you know, YouTubers blowing things up and going for clicks and bait and all that stuff. Now, I don't doubt that that's true. I have absolutely no doubt that there are multiple industries and sectors, companies, organisations that use NDAs extremely similar to this one. And if you have only had experience of this style of NDA... Yeah, it's a boilerplate NDA, and you 
you know what it is. You know that that's just the standard and that's how these things work. That's fine. I don't think really anyone's disagreeing with the fact that NDAs like this exist and are standard in some sectors or some areas. The thing is that whilst it is true that in some places this is undoubtedly a boilerplate NDA, it's also true that it is not the standard for this particular little weird sphere that we have going on on YouTube. So when it comes to NDAs between companies and independent third parties, specifically when it comes to things like like tabletop games or or like card games, the like, that's not standard. I've signed a few NDAs in my time, and none of them have been anywhere close to this leaked NDA. And this leaked NDA is supposedly what Games Workshop is sending to content creators. Now, Vince, otherwise known as uh, Pleasant Kenobi on the internet, he has done a video about this, and he talked about the fact that he signed a good six or seven, seven or eight NDAs for similar things, and none of them have been this stringent. Brent from Goober Town Hobbies has talked about NDAs, and the fact that he's not come across anything like this either. So it is entirely possible and entirely feasible and plausible, and I don't think there's any disagreement that in some spaces this is absolutely probably what you would expect to sign this leaked NDA. However, in this little sphere, in this little kind of corner of the internet, it's not standard. It's way, way overboard compared to anything else that most content creators who have signed NDAs have seen. I mean, even in the thread on Reddit, it was talked about the fact that, you know, oh, no wonder Midwinter Minis, guy from Midwinter Minis, cut short his NDA. And he said, well, the one I signed was nothing like this. So this is like, this is two examples from the same company. And that's what I mean by two things can be true at one time. You can look at it and say, well, this is this is standard for what I'm used to. But it's not standard for what content creators are used to. It's also worth pointing out that in the context of receiving a box of miniatures for a you know as a product review, this is really, really over the top, like super over the top. So things like a three year term, so that's 36 months if Games Workshop sends you a box of a box of like new Eldar something or other to review, wouldn't it be nice? Um, <laughs> then for the next three years, that NDA is in effect for you. If Games Workshop keeps sending you stuff, that will just continue rolling on indefinitely. Now, I've looked through it a few times, and for the life of me, I can't find a way to opt out of it. Now, that could just be me being blind and stupid. It's entirely possible. I wouldn't put it past me to miss something obvious. But it looks like there's no specific way to get out of it. So as long as Games Workshop keeps sending you stuff, whether you like it or not, would that even stand up? Would that work? Could you, would that be something that's even, you know, plausible or supportable when it comes to, like, a court of law? I don't know, but it reads that way. This thing, well, so yeah, so like three-year term, that's pretty extreme compared to anything I've had any experience of in this specific context. I'm not talking other industries, I'm not talking other professions, I'm not talking employment contracts or anything like that. I'm talking in this specific little space that we have here. So that's already something that's totally different to what most content creators are used to when it comes to this specific interaction. There's also things like the indemnity clause, where if something happens with this NDA, if Games Workshop decide to go after you, even if you are found to have not been at fault, you pay all their legal fees. Again, I've never seen that before, and neither has pretty much any content creator I've spoken to, and it's something that is specifically pointed out by both Hoag Law and by Discourse Miniatures in their breakdown. They are both people who have a background in legal stuff. I mean, Hoag Law is literally, like, it's in the name. The clue's in the name for that one. So, again, that's something that never, ever come across when it comes to signing an NDA for what is effectively a product review. Things like a non-compete clause. I've not signed anything before where it has a non-compete clause. I mean, in the context of you signing something from Games Workshop in order to review their products, does that non-compete clause mean that you can't talk about any other war games? That you can't talk about other plastic soldier kits? Is that what that is? Because that's pretty extreme, surely. If you're getting a box of free Space Marines, you know, once a week, maybe even once a month, then... Does that mean that you can no longer talk about any competitor to Games Workshop? Is Infinity off the table? No Malfax, no War Machine, no Warmer Hordes, none of that? 
I mean, it could be read that way. And as I say, I'm not a lawyer, but reading it through, my initial thing was, I wouldn't sign this if you'd... Like, unless there was a significant chunk of money attached, which would also require me to sort of, you know, kind of give up on any uh, moral standing that I might wish to maintain, there's just no way. It's like, it's too massively one-sided towards Games Workshop in every conceivable way. Something else that needs to be considered, which may be a case of a mistaken, like, a mistaken interpretation, is a clause in there that talks about how you cannot do anything to damage the reputation of Games Workshop. Now, there's a couple of different ways that that can be read. In fairness, I would imagine that that's implemented not necessarily to go after people who do not like the box of Space Marines they received. It's probably more so that you don't go on horrendous, awful tirades in the middle of a video whilst Games Workshop products are clearly displayed. It's so that you can't slag off the company in a malicious way outside of you know, reviewing something. But, then again, this is Games Workshop we're talking about, and they have something of a litigious history, don't they? So you could easily read it as, well, does this mean I can only be positive about a product that I'm reviewing? I mean, it could go either way. It depends on personal interpretation. But that in itself is an issue, because it shouldn't be down to personal interpretation. It shouldn't be vague enough that you are having to guess as to what the intent behind that is. In the context, again, of little toy soldiers, product reviews, stuff where one company is sending stuff to a independent third party for review, we're not talking being employed by them, we're not talking being under some sort of like, like consultancy contract or something like that, we are literally talking product for review for an independent creator, that again is something that is very heavily weighted towards Games Workshop. And that's the overall theme of this NDA. And as I say, no doubt at all that in other places, in other spaces and in other industries, that is absolutely the norm. But it is not the norm for this particular little niche that we have going on here. It is not the norm for that. And it really shows a severe, like a severe bias towards Games Workshop in the terms of this thing. Now you could say, well, of course it does. I mean, NDAs by their very nature are biased. It is literally one party telling another party what they can and cannot talk about, specifically what they cannot talk about. So in that way, yeah, there's always bias. That's just part of the territory. That's just how it goes. But in this instance, there is a, a lot of control and there's a lot of kind of there's a lot of stringent clauses that are very, very heavy-handed for the context of the agreement between the two parties, because it is simply product for review. It is simply receiving something from Games Workshop, opening it up, and telling people about it. That's it. That's the whole thing. And yet the NDA makes it, like, really, really, like, a hugely significant decision as to whether to go for it. That's something that I think can't be overstated. You need to be 100% sure you're happy with everything in there when it comes to signing this. And of course, you should be with any legal document. You should always go and get a second opinion. You should always have someone look over it for you. If you don't have a background in this sort of thing, if you are not qualified to look over this stuff, then for God's sake, don't just read it through and go, yeah, I think I get that. If you think, if you only think you get it, you probably don't. I know that that's the case for me. Anything that I've signed in the past... I have asked about. Now, I can't show the stuff that I've signed in the past, but that's the nature of the thing that you sign. But, again, the stuff that I've had experience with, it is it is very simple. It's very clear. It's very, like, cut and dry. Comparing those to something as heavy-handed as this leaked NDA, it really does show a significant difference. And the thing is, if it was just me, if it was just my personal experience, then I would be perfectly happy to look at it and go, well... Maybe because I've not signed anything from Games Workshop before, maybe it's just that this is what it's always been like. Maybe because I haven't dealt with other, like, larger names when it comes to this sort of thing. Maybe, again, this is actually standard and it's not too much of an issue. But it's not just me. It's other content creators doing similar things. It's other channels that cover similar subjects who have signed a good number of agreements that are nowhere close to this, but cover pretty much the same territory. It's people who have got far bigger and far more successful channels than mine, who have signed other things from Games Workshop that are not like this, that are not as bad as this, that are not as controlling or extreme as this. 
That's what gives me pause, and that's what needs to be talked about. Now, it could just be a case of, rather than there being some sort of, like, villainous moustache twirling going on, it could simply be that they wanted to update their NDA that they send to creators, and they just... You know their 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 legal their little, their legal team just slapped a few clauses in from other NDAs that they use or other example NDAs as a way to ensure and protect themselves against some things. I mean, there's been stuff in the past, in the recent past, where they have had an issue with specific people. You know, using their name, using their trademark stuff. It could be an overreaction to that, but that doesn't necessarily mean that that doesn't improve it whether it's like a mustache twirling villainous move or just a move of yeah we'll just slap some extra stuff in there just to make it a bit more watertight and it's just down to incompetence that it makes it look as though you can't you know you can't compete there's like a non-compete clause when it comes to reviewing a box of miniatures just flat out doesn't make any sense unless you're trying to prohibit other content creators, like, you know, as you're trying to prohibit third parties from talking about other products that you don't make, in which case, that is villainous. That is crappy. That is something that is done primarily to hamper other people. Same thing with the indemnity clause. Maybe that's just in there to scare people. If it is just in there to scare people, though, why put it in something that is being given to an independent third party? Do you see what I mean? If it is villainous, if it is just really overreaching and trying to exert as much control over independent people as possible, that's a really shit thing to do, and you shouldn't do it. If it's just a case of, well, we'll just grab this out of this one and this out of this one, make it nice and watertight, and, oh, actually, this is a massive overreach compared to what people are used to, and it's just incompetence, that's not great either. No matter which way you go, it's kind of shit, and not something that should be signed lightly if at all. At the end of the day, no matter which way this has gone or what the thinking behind it was, it's either extremely overzealous and nowhere close to what content creators are used to signing in this specific context, or it's extremely overzealous because not enough thought was put into it, and vague enough that it actually sounds threatening where really there should be no threat inferred. Neither of those are good. It's not a good look for Games Workshop, and it's definitely not good for especially smaller content creators who might be tempted to sign this. You should always get, you should always, always get advice on this stuff from someone who is trained in it, someone who is qualified, someone who knows what they're talking about. Don't sign anything without having someone else who knows what they're doing look over it for you. In this specific instance, though, the overreach just feels a bit crazy, and if you are faced with this thing, I mean... I get it. I genuinely do. The idea of getting products from Games Workshop for free that you can review, it it's good. It sounds great. It sounds awesome. It sounds like you would be able to actually, you know, make something out of your hobby in terms of maybe a bit of income on the side or maybe making it your full-time job. It's great because you don't have to pay for that stuff. Games Workshop stuff is expensive as hell. Believe me, I know. I've never signed an NDA with Games Workshop. I've never had any sort of professional dealing with them in terms of that side of things. They don't send me anything, as I have joked about in the past. And I just want to point out, they are jokes. I know a few people have said, well, if you contacted them, I'm sure you could. Yeah, maybe. But I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. That's not something that I'm particularly interested in. I bought all of this myself. I know how expensive Games Workshop stuff is. And the idea of being able to get this stuff for free, whilst also using it to boost your channel to be able to get access to stuff early, it's super tempting. But this NDA, if you get it, if you reach out and you get this to sign, this is a massive, massive overreach. It is asking for so much of you in return for, let's face it, nothing from Games Workshop. All NDAs are slightly imbalanced. That's what they're for. They are there to make sure that you don't talk about something beyond a certain point, if at all. This one is incredibly imbalanced. And I, the the various issues with it, they could completely cut you off from being able to do anything but look at Games Workshop stuff. Either that, or Games Workshop have no intention of, of enforcing any of it. In which case, I'd say you don't need to worry, but in which case the question is, why is it there to begin with? It's just not a good thing to sign. It's not a good thing to go near. 
don't touch it with a barge pole. And when it comes to this kind of overreach, making noise about it is the best thing you can do because there needs to be awareness of this sort of thing. There needs to be some sort of some sort of public discussion about it because this is the kind of thing where if you sign it, you can't talk about it and you can't express dissatisfaction. You can't mention how one-sided it is. It's only because it was leaked that we're having this conversation to begin with. And the fact that now it is leaked, so many people have looked at it and said, what is this compared to literally anything else that these people have ever had to sign before, kind of shows that it needed to be talked about, in my opinion. I guess the Too Long Didn't Watch is document bad, don't sign. Why it's bad, unfortunately, that's something we're never going to get an answer to. Whether it's intentionally overreaching or incompetence-led overreaching, we don't know. All I know is you couldn't pay me to sign this thing, and you probably shouldn't sign it either. Mm -hmm.